He pulled the guy out of the uh, of the barber shop, told him, uh, took, turned him around, frisked him, found two straight razors that he had stolen from the the barber shop, and and turned him around. And it had been raining that night, so it was all wet. There was an umbrella that the guy had brought, and the guy asked him, "Well, what are you going to do with me?" My dad said, "Just going to hold you here for the police." And you could hear him coming down the street. The sirens were on, and the guy looked around and says. I'm not going back to prison. And jump, my dad, boom, knocks the gun out of his hand, and boom, whoever got to that gun first was gonna live. You know, I know that for sure. And I'm in the back bedroom, and it's happening this far from my from my window, and, and my, my luckily my dad got to the ground first while this guy's beating him with his umbrella, turned around, and bam, fired. At the same time, the cops come rolling out of the, of the their patrol car on the street and they start, they heard a shot they started firing bah, 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 bah. and this is happening this far outside of my window you know it was just to give you a, a a a glimpse as to what that neighborhood was like and you know how you grew up especially as a little kid your expectations and you know you 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 realize really Thank quickly you very much. and so you know and he turned to me and said Cheech you go learn about art uh -huh. I, you know, I didn't, the only thing I knew about art is you, when you go up to church and you, you know, during the mass you're looking up at the, uh, the ceiling and, wow, look at all these guys in sheets, you know, and, and why are they barbecuing that guy? <laughs> so that's what I thought about art, you know, so I, I went to the library in whatever town I was in and I took out all the art books. You know, okay, as much as many as they would let me take out that day, I took them out well, and uh, I'm gonna fall off this thing, huh? <laughs> yeah. And, and I would take all the art books, that's how I learned about it. Okay, that's Picasso, okay. And that's uh, 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 Cezanne, and that's Miro, and that's uh, everybody else, you know. So that's how I learned. So by the time I got to the position where I had enough money to buy art, I knew all about it because I'd been studying it through books. And I went to museums, and that's how you have to see paintings. You have to go and see them live because it's a different experience than just looking at, at them in the book. In my new book here, Cheech uh, is not my real name, let's put up this one. Everybody can see. I, I, I write about that experience and how I discovered uh, the love of painting. And the, 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 uh, the gap in my knowledge was contemporary art. I didn't know anything about contemporary art. So I went, started going to galleries on the west side of LA, and that's where I discovered these Chicano painters. And when I first saw them, I go, these guys are really good. Why, because I knew what good painting was, because I'd seen it all my life. Now, how come they're not getting any shelf space, and why are, you know, so I started the experience that I was told by my dad was going to happen. I wasn't going to go crazy, uh, and I wasn't going to be stealing out of my mother's purse to uh, support my heroin habit the next day. And it started to really change my perspective. I was listening to the music that I heard a hundred times. Hurry Man, live from the village gate. I heard this album a zillion times. It was live. And, I, and the first time I heard, oh, this is... They're, it's live. There's people in the cafe or, or in, the, in the club and they're ordering drinks and they're moving chairs and they're, they're talking to each other. It was like coming into a whole other realm of perspective. You know, like, wow, this is... Because I'm the oldest baby boomer. The baby boomer year started with, with me. And everything that was going to happen to me was going to happen to everybody else behind me first. And so I, I was in the front of this big wave and like, wow, this is... This is cool. People have asked me, what are the two biggest influences on your, your education? Uh, I said, well, Catholic education and dope, you know. <laughs> One's a discipline and one undoes the discipline, you know. And that was a great way to grow up because you got to look at different things from different aspects, you know. And at the same time, at the, at the, at the end of my college career, the very last uh, uh, the year was a big uh, tumultuous year in, in, in American politics. The Vietnam War was really raging, and they were, they were, the draft was instituted, and, and traditionally the draft 
drives a wedge between any any uh, population that uh, that is uh, that is foisted upon, and this this uh, this particular Vietnam War was causing causing a lot of controversy because it wasn't even a war; it was a police action undeclared, and for some vague reason there was nobody that had that had bombed our twin towers or uh, dropped bombs on Pearl Harbor or invaded Long Beach, you know, and. And what are, what are we doing over there? So 